We're about to go to the Word. Come on. Somebody, if you're Pentecostal, and tell them, yes. yes, oh, yes, be seated. Brother, he's a wonder in my soul. I don't know, I only got about 10 of you that know that. He's a wonder in my soul. Bless his name. He soul hey! he's a wonder in my soul he's a wonder in my soul oh bless his holy and wonderful righteous redeeming name Woo! well something happened and now I know he touched me he 
speed. You ought to touch yourself and let the healing power of God flow through you. He touched me. And he made. Proclaim it today. He made me whole. Some of y'all ain't saved like you should. But let the church say yes. 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 Y'all know I'm Kojic. That ain't no new news. Yes. Yes. It ain't praise if it ain't heard. Ain't no silent praise. Whoever taught that lied to you. Death and life is in the power of your tongue. Yes, Shabak, you sound good today. Sounds like a healthy church. I believe that our proclamation is putting on flesh. I proclaim this to be a healthy church dedicated to the Lord Jesus Christ to the day of his return. Hallelujah. yonder the boho. We have a long way to go, but let me, without music right now, let me acknowledge those who chose to fellowship with us. Let me acknowledge our guest, and then we'll go there. Let me acknowledge our guest. These names are a little difficult for me this morning. Hallelujah. I feel like going on. Though trials come on every hand. Look at somebody and tell them you've got to pursue, you've got to press on. I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining. Every day, no higher plane that I have found, Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. If your name is not called and you're a visitor, we will still have you stand at the end to applaud your presence here at the Shabbat Church. I just don't want music because I just need this atmosphere to, say, to stay like it is. This person is from Orlando, Florida. They are guests of Amia Jackson. This person's name is Fugina Fulizio, or no, it's Fugina Galizio, Galizio. If you're here, am I saying this name right? Am I really? No, no, tell me how to say it. I said it okay? Let's clap for Sister Fugina Galizio. I'm excited to have you. And Daphne, it says, Finua, Finua, where are you? Stand, let us appreciate you. Did I say your name right? Finua, 
Get up and say it. What is it? Fanur. Fanur. So not Fanur. Fanur. Amen. Let us applaud these two beautiful women who have come to fellowship with us. From Ocala, Florida, they are guests of one of our hosts. Y'all call them ushers, greeters. Uh, Teresa Ward, y'all know her. Some of you know her as three. Tina Albretta, Tina Albretta, can we clap for Tina? Elise per, per, Perdomo, Elise Perdomo, amen. Let's clap for every last one. Tamara Rushing, Sister Lucretia Walker, thank all of you. This person was told to come here through someone that lives in Atlanta. They're from Orlando, Florida, but someone had to inform them we were here from Atlanta. Carlos Jones, where are you, Carlos? There is Brother Carlos. These three guests connected with us through YouTube. They're from St. Petersburg, Florida. Sister Latoya Lewis. Way in the back, y'all give her overdose. Sheikah Sweet. And Patrina Lewis. Can we thank God for all of our guests? If your name has not been called because you did not make it to the front desk to let us know who you are, please stand if you're a guest in this church. Let's thank God and scream Shabak as loud as you can. For all of our guests. Birthdays on this month. Both of these are born on the same day, which is September the 6th, which was when? Friday, because I was out preaching. Friday, September the 6th, one of our newborn who was born here, raised here, Layla Sheely, just turned five years. Oh, come on. Five years old. And Brother Matthew Tillman. It's his birthday also. Y'all clap for Brother Matthew. I, I, I did. Y'all stay connected to me on Friday night. Friday night. Greensboro, North Carolina. Speakers, Bishop George Bloomer, Prophet Brian Kahn, Bishop Paul Sylvester Morton, Bishop Tim Newton, then one of my favorite in my top three, Bishop Lambert Gates, and then your bishop closed it on Friday. We had a beautiful time. Thank you, we had a beautiful time. Did y'all pray for me? Because if not, I'm mad with all of you. Because I'm back here tired. Tuck it out. But I made a covenant with you and God that we're gonna do our best until we see this church in the posture that we know the Holy Ghost can put us in. My calendar. I just want to show you a few things. Put up the first flyer. On uh, this week, I have to leave out again the Triad Church of God in Christ in Baltimore, Maryland. Bishop Carl Pierce is a beautiful man in the Church of God in Christ. My members don't know too much about Kojic, but those who are churchy should know. And uh, we'll be there on, I was supposed to be there starting Wednesday, but I'm going to be with you on Wednesday because we're having Bible study. I'm in a series and I don't want to miss my Bible study. We finished faith, but now what will our faith produce? Touch somebody and tell them miracles. I'll be the speaker Friday and I want this church packed pack next Sunday because I cannot be present. This is one of my bishop Sundays. I have to be in Baltimore, and I'll explain it to you in about two minutes, but you will applaud and clap because we're going to hear the voice of the executive pastor on next Sunday, Pastor Sonia Mixon. Come on.
and she is well able. Well able. I've already told y'all since year one, we will not build this church on one voice. That becomes a cult. We don't worship human beings. We honor them. We respect them. But God can speak through a donkey. Am I right about it? Now, we ain't going to have no donkeys preaching in here, but I'm just telling you. That God can speak through a rooster, but we don't need no birds up in here preaching. All right, so, and then my next appointment, the ecumenical guest speaker. All you haters hate deep inside now. Because I feel your tension. But when you love your leader, when God takes him or her up, you automatically go up with them. So I'm going to say it like the old saints. If the Lord say the same, and if I live to see this day, we will be preaching at the Holy Convocation. I'm honored to be invited by the largest black organization in the world, the Grand Ole. I don't hear nobody, Church of God in Christ. The announcement is going out. It started this week. I did not put that fly out. They did it. So now you know it's true. We didn't make this flyer. They did. So I appreciate your prayers. So I'm going to tell you something that you won't believe. It has been a fact that whenever a Friday night speaker preached, if they did well, their church grew by 100%. These are the statistics. So I believe that before the year is out, we will experience some beautiful things. For some of you that don't want to praise, that's the first miracle right there. Maybe see that. Put our... De declaration on the screen. And we are going to say this together before we preach. Because I am decreeing and declaring that this ministry will change this region and show people church is still the church. If you believe that, clap your hands with happiness and joy. All right, all of you stand on your feet and with a loud voice, we will read this twice and we'll be reading it through the entire year. Let's read. Remember, the relationship between a pastor and the congregation is a partnership with mutual respect and support being essential for the health of the church. Take a deep breath because I want you to digest that. I want our e-members to know that I love you all. Did not we have a beautiful Zoom Bible study this week? Oh, my God. We had over 480 people. 480 people for Bible study. It's getting uh, real beautiful for this church. This time, read it from your heart and read it until you believe it. Let's go. Remember, the relationship between the pastor and the congregation is a partnership with mutual respect and support being essential for the health. Now clap for your healthy church, your healthy leader, your healthy brother, your healthy sister. Get your Bibles. Get your Bibles. Today will be the best day, the best day of my life. I just felt that. It, it just. I know it's a song, but it's prophetic right now. Sing it real low. No real key. Come on, today will be 
prophesy the best day, the best day. All right, all right. Make sure it starts. Now, you that don't like preaching and only like our church for music, you can go now. We'll be playing some more music next Sunday for Club Jesus. But for you that know that upon this rock, I'll build my church. You that grew up on songs like in the word of God. I have a hiding place. Throw me overboard. On Tuesday, I mean on Friday, if you were watching, and let me pull it up. Are y'all in a rush, rush? On Tuesday, a man told his bishop that he only had three weeks to live. Friday, I mean, in Greensboro. I let assistant pastor see this on last night. When Timothy picked me up from the airport, they texted me at 8.15 p.m. when we landed. And I was just too tired to read the text when I first got it because I'm exhausted. But I told the man, being that you're dying... Give me the rest of your money tonight. I mean, if you know you're dying, don't hold on to it. Look at y'all. Look, y'all, y'all gonna take it to the grave? Brown, if you knew you were dying tonight, I need all that money. Cause you ain't gonna do nothing with it. Dr. Deborah. He gave us the report from his doctor. He had one kidney left. No longer could he take dialysis. It failed. And they told him, hospice, call your family. He decided, with his hair falling out and everything, not to call his family, but to first come to church. He came with his pastor. He came with walking sticks. He looked at me. He said, you're right. Had a weak voice. You can take my money. And I took it. Presented it to God. Got off the airplane. And this is what his pastor wrote. And him. Yesterday, 8.15 after Friday, 10.30 p.m. It's a OMG. My armor bearer, Marcus Hayes, who is the name of the young man that stood next to me with the cane, whose money you took and prophesied that if he gave it, he would be alive. He gave the money. He received your word. Just now, at 8 o'clock, he called me to say he got a call from Duke Hospital that a kidney just became available. Look at somebody tell them, September to remember, baby. Now we're talking about miracles. They asked him, come quickly to do a blood test so that they can make sure that if the kidney match, they will operate right away. Normally the procedure takes time, but this will be done immediately. Touch them and tell them I'm next for that. I am next for that. Maybe y'all didn't hear when I preached it last week. Don't worry, all you unhealthy members, you're going to be replaced with healthy members. Don't worry about it. Don't, I'm not even talk about you much because that's the only way you get attention. But let me say this, this morning, Brother James and Juanita Lockett, stand. Both of you stand. Let's clap for our wonderful members. This morning, 
their biological daughter, son-in-law, and grandchild was headed to one of my friend's churches, Powerhouse, not Apostle, not Prophet Rockmore, but Bishop William Hudson III. While they were driving the church this morning, a car high-speed chase took place between the cops and the criminal. They were driving the church eight minutes away from their destination, and the high-speed chase wound up slamming his daughter, son-in-law, grandchild in the back in direct collision, hit them on the other side of the road in oncoming traffic. They got smashed. They got the phone call. The police then saw them, also caught the car that was speeding, the criminal, ran to them first and said, is anyone in there still alive? The answer was, we all here. Y'all ain't talking. Their car is completely demolished, totaled. The son-in-law is in intensive care but living. The daughter and the child, the back was smashed. The child is living, walking around. The daughter's walking around. The son will come out alive. We need to praise the God of miracles. And some of you won't praise God for somebody you don't like. You got a demon. Because this could have been your child. Your grandchild. It could have been you. Because some of you know you can't drive. You drive too fast. I'm excited that for a miracle to be valid, you must be in a mess you're not supposed to get out of. High five yourself and tell them, and tell yourself, well, I guess I'm a miracle. Tell them I'm in need of one, but I am one. It is not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit. Bishop save the Lord of hosts. And by his stripes. We are healed. The police officer said there's no way any one of you should have come out there alive. But one day when I was lost, where's my seasoned saints? He died upon the cross. I know it was the blood for me. It could have been worse. Watch it sing, your father. I know what you're feeling. I do. I do. I know what you're feeling. It was an old song, Dr. Barbara. It said, I'm going to stay right under the blood. And the world can't do me no harm. No weapon. Where's my Bible scholars? No weapon that is formed against me shall prosper. Will you say that with power? No weapon 
that is formed against me shall prosper. I want you to pay very close attention to this message today. It will be one of the most uncanny, somewhat unscripted teachings of the month. Now I need 20 of you to voluntarily talk to me so I don't feel alone. In particularly, my leaders I want you all to start communicating more and stop scanning the audience for some type of attention. The sermon today, I didn't have a topic, but the Lord gave me this, the hindrance of a miracle. Look at somebody and ask them, what's hindering you from getting a miracle? I sent that flyer. It could have been posted at that time. But the hindrance. I can't preach and produce, but the hindrance. Of a miracle. It is extremely important that some of you find out and stop using as an excuse, somebody's praying against me. I need you to mature above the level of, I believe someone's watching witch, working witchcraft. You need to start accepting the problem may be you. And Lord, them that clap, pay their bills right there. No, no, not after. The first ones. Not talking to the echoes. I'm talking to the originals. People don't believe that they can be the cause of the delay or the denial of what God truly wants to do for you. One man said it like this, Lord, I believe. Help thou my unbelief. Is it possible to do both at the same time? I just told you it was. For the rookies that tell you you can't believe and not believe, you're either one or the other, that's not true. They don't read enough. The centurion man said, don't rush me, Lord, I believe. Help thou the portion of me that gets a little fickle because the situation becomes so. And the analogy, the biblical contextual analogy is Jesus told Peter, come out the boat and walk. And he did. But when the storm got a little more boisterous, he started paying attention to the situation and began to sink. It's not that you don't have faith. It's not that you don't believe. But the situation will heat itself up to find out where do you stop believing like you believe. That is also an invitation. For you to tell God, I need a miracle. Yelling, just tell someone, I need a miracle this morning. Well, it's afternoon now. This afternoon. I need three of you to talk to me and tell somebody, and I need it immediately. You've not been in a car collision, but you've been in some type of collision. Don't make me preach, Justin, but you've been in some type of collision. Could the problem be, Dr. Deborah, 
Could the problem be Dr. Butts? Could the problem be that you took the faith you once had into a corrupt group of people and allowed them to penetrate what you once was? Oh, y'all are quiet now. If faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God and how can they hear without a preacher, then that means Satan knows the only way for your faith to become infected is to put infectious people in your space to start infecting everything you want. Did you get your car yet? Why are you asking? You should be saying, what kind of car are you getting? But the reason why you said that is you don't expect for me to get a car. Are you healed yet? You know these yet people. What they don't know for my three folk that are actually pushing me is yet means it's not over. We are troubled on every side. All right, I'm going to leave that alone. Yet not. Cast down but not. You must keep your faith guarded by keeping it in a healthy space where people confirm what God continues to say to you they versus attacking it on the slide. All y'all do over there is run, jump, and scream and cut the fool. What? See, my church, we build on the word. If you build on the word and the word is real and the word is factual, how do you not move, praise, jump, and clap when you hear God told Lazarus, get up? How in the world do you see dirt spit, put on eyes, go wash in the pool of Siloam, come back seeing, and just sit there? Like some of you are doing right now, you have your Catholic disposition on. Your Episcopalian face. You don't act like that at the club. At the game. You be screaming at the TV. You ain't even got money to get a ticket. Look at him. Look, I can't be. But in church. And he created you. I, I need to talk. In his image. And you give everything excitement but the creator. Look at somebody and tell them something is absolutely wrong with that. Now the women don't want to talk, so I might as well go on and I was going to try to stay this laid back. But I ain't prophet hall if I don't get on your nerves, so let me help you. Y'all treat God like some of your men treat you. They out with you to eat. Other women walk by, they be like, good Lord, but they ain't say good Lord about you one time. That's called how you devalue God. Then when you ain't talking to him, what's wrong with you? We ate, what, you didn't enjoy it? You really want to say Negro. You looked at that girl the whole time. You ain't never looked at me like that. When the real question should be, why are you still with him? Now let me come back. Why is God still blessing some of you when he can't even get the attention that he deserves? All right. Hey, Mark, I missed you. Let me say this to my 30 folk that are pushing me. Y'all must be... I feel like color purple. Pass me them biscuits, Harpo. My God, the dead has arisen. Some of you are blessed. You receiving blessings on a daily basis. What is a blessing? He woke me up this morning. <clears throat> Let me name some blessings. He clothed me in my right mind. He gave me the activities of my lips. 
I'm testifying. The blood is flowing. Warm in my veins. That's a blessing that most people get across the board. But folk who get miracles say things like this. I should be dead by now. I don't know how I'm still surviving. Ain't got a job. God's paying my bills. Sick. Don't have medication. See, some of you blessed folk are mad at some of us miraculous folk. Because my life is not just a blessing. My life. The things that I had to go through and could not avoid. And the things that he brought me out of after he walked me through it. See, y'all ain't going to bother me because I'm leaving soon because the cowboy's coming on. But I got a song that the angels can't sing. Not even the heavens have access to redemption. That's why Satan, even if he repented, can't go. But you and I, we have access to God in a way that no other creature has ever had. If you think that that's a miracle, clap your hands and shout, I'm a miracle. Matthew chapter 13, verse 54 through 58. If I don't preach, I won't be here Wednesday. Look at some of the blessed folk. See, I just hate, that just sounds arrogant to me. Serena don't have to prove she can play tennis. Tiger Woods does not have to prove. Michael Jordan does not have to prove. Why can't preachers who've been doing it a while uh, say what they can do as well just like you women I know I can get any man I want you ain't got one today but what I'm trying to tell you that a lot of you talk trash but you hate when the kingdom of God affirms their God in a way where it sounds like we're bragging we are if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, where would we be? Verse 54 through 58, you don't have to stand for this unless you choose. When he was coming to his own country, he taught them in their synagogues in so much that they were astonished and said, whence have this man this type of wisdom and these mighty works? Mighty works are the two words used for the word miracle. Is not this the, the, the carp carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary? Are not these his brethren, James, Joseph, Ho 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 Jose in Spanish, Simon and Judas? And are not these his sisters? Are they not all with us? When then had this man all these things? Which means there's no way he should have what he has because of the family he's from. All right, I'm going to leave this alone. Some of you are the exception to the rule. What makes you a miracle is according to your environment and your household, you shouldn't be who you are right now. I wish I had help. And when you are the miracle in your family, you are mistreated by your family. Now let me come back. Joseph was the miracle. That's why he was betrayed by all his brothers. David became king after he was hated by all his brothers. Seems like to me, for my two members, somebody has to hate on you before God steps to you. Nah, Bishop, I don't receive that. Well, you don't know the Bible. The Bible said that when God saw that Leah was hated, he opened up her womb. Some of you will not produce until someone say you can't. The first miracle is people looking at you wondering, how are you doing what you are doing? No college degree. Taking care of your kids and don't even have a baby's daddy helping you. 
how can you dance and shout and just got evicted last week? What are you on that I'm not taking? To the members and maybe visitors if you choose that know that you're about to get a miracle in this month, jump up and shout glory and be seated. And to the members that didn't jump, I hope it's because you can't. Because if you didn't, I promise you next week will be a hard week for you. And that ain't witchcraft. You're a part of my sermon. When you don't obey the voice, you cancel your miracle. Well, why we got to do all of that? Why did they have to march around the walls every day? You don't get a miracle being just waiting because God going to do it anyway if he want to. Who taught you that? I don't need no leader to get out of what I'm in. God chose Moses and said, lead them. You can't lead yourself when you can't even follow yourself. You're in the mess you in because you were your own follower. All right, we'll move on. I'm going to do what's in my heart. Yep, that's what's going to happen. You're going to have a heart attack. Verse 57 and 58 brings more words in that my healthy church should talk. They were offended, like some of you, in him. Uh, they were offended. But Jesus said to them, a prophet, a voice, a herald. It's not without honor saving his own country and in his own house. Y'all don't think this is good. And he did not many mighty works because, oh, y'all don't want to have to, of their unbelief. Let me say this for big people who will talk. Never submit where you won't serve. Never let your own voice be louder than the voice God put over you. God told Adam, don't eat from the tree. Eve ate from it, nothing happened, and she influenced him. Maybe God changed his mind. He ate, then God came and said, why you ate? Then Adam said, the woman you gave me. Some of y'all got to find somebody to blame for this, but listen. But listen for my three still happy people. God then says further down in that chapter, chapter 3 of Genesis, he said, the problem is you obeyed her voice over my command. And some of you listen to who you love versus who loves you. The issue is you better hope that person can give you a miracle when you're in a situation you cannot get out of. Dedication can be devastating, especially when who you're dedicating to is not dedicated to God. I got some of my young adults talking to me today. Because you don't like the King James, most of you, because you don't read it, let's read it in the Message Bible. I'm halfway through. Let's read in the Message Bible. Stay with me, Howie. Stay with me today. When Jesus finished telling these stories, he left there, returned to his hometown, which meant he got his accolades from somewhere else. Like I do when I don't preach here. He gave a lecture in the meeting house. He was so good, he stole the show, impressing everyone. Y'all still don't want to talk? We had no idea he was this good, they said. How did he get so wise, get such ability? But in the next breath, right after they gave him accolades, they started, 
Yep, that's some of y'all right through here that ain't talking. We've known him since he was a kid. He's a carpenter's son. We know his mother, Mary. We know his brothers, James and Joseph and Simon and Judas. Are all his sisters live here? Who does he think he is? They got all bent out of shape. Y'all remember my first sermon, Woman Down Loose? No, I'm going to leave that alone. Jesus said, help me associate pastor, a prophet is taken for granted. Oh, y'all quiet. In his hometown and in his family. The result of being taken advantage of is he didn't do many miracles there because of their hostile indifferences. Look at your name and tell him, why are you so hostile? Why are you so hostile? Some of you are really hostile and I'm glad when you're absent because your spirit don't spread. You're really hostile. See, I, I might as well preach to folk who want me to preach. I don't miss you. At all. You're hostile. You never have nothing good to say about anybody. You're always bringing the messy stuff. And what you do is you bring so much mess that God has to bring a miracle in his place. And what makes you more upset is when he continues to bless who you don't like. You can outdress them, you can't outlive them. Your hair is done, but your soul is filthy. Now let me preach. True deliverance begins on the inside. High five somebody and tell them, I believe you're going to get a miracle today. That word, I miss Dr. Tracy, but she's on her first cruise ever. And she asked for permission, and I know she's watching when she should be outside on the tear deck getting some sun. But Dr. Deborah take four vacations every month. But let me talk to y'all. <laughs> unbelief, that word unbelief is the Greek word. That's why I miss her, because I go to Greek. Apistia. Say that word, apistia. Within that word, the word pistis means faith. Apistia means against faith. Apistia, look at me, does not mean doubt. It means unbelief. It then suggests for two folk who will jump because you like teaching that to have un anything, something first had to be done. So unbelief is a person who once believed and they allowed someone in their camp to undo. Oh, yeah. And that's where we get the term, you know better. Oh, yeah. See, if you're doing something that you weren't raised to do, you are undoing what you were taught to do. And then someone who loves you should approach you and not agree with what you're doing, but tell you, you know better than that. Look at somebody, because we're going to reveal demons here for a little while. This is deliverance in the real movie. Just look at somebody and tell them you know better than that. Now, they might growl at you in a minute. They may put a Facebook post on, not say your name, but you know they talking to you. But there are people who have said, you grew up better than this. And if you came from good stock, talk to me, three of you. They said, your mama would roll over in her grave. Your grandmama would slap you in your mouth this morning if she was alive. How do you change so drastically? Easy, you changed your company. I'm not 
not here to preach the doubters. I'm here to straighten out the unbelievers. If you believe God can still work miracles like he did in the Bible, shout yes. yes. We're going to church in about 30 more minutes. We're going to church now. Go to the book of Mark chapter 6 verses 1 through 6. Mm, Mark chapter 6 verses 1 through 6. Help me, Holy Ghost. And he went out from thence, Sister Lasante, came into his own country. Same story, but Mark sees it a different way. His disciples followed him, and when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in their synagogue. Many hearing him were, were what? Astonished, saying, from whence have this man these things? What wisdom is this which is given unto him, that even such mighty works are wrought by his hand? If I say this and doc, Dr. Brown says amen, I'll keep going and bless some of you. The word hands are in the text because you got to work a miracle. You don't just wait on it. The woman with the issue wanted a miracle. She got to crawl. I don't, I don't understand. Lazy people don't get miracles. People that need pity. You do not qualify for this. Your miracle comes because every day you're working. If, if a relationship of two people that continue to hurt each other continues and it makes it to the finish line and it becomes the greatest relationship they thought they could ever have, you're going to give glory to God, but let me help ten folk who will jump high now. If something that should have killed each other works, you got a miracle because both of them worked on it. It wasn't just God. It was two people. Oh, y'all don't. Miracles don't just come from God. They come through God. But, oh, yeah. The miracle is two people must communicate and say, why is all of this happening to us? Who are you in the Holy Ghost? Who are you in the Holy Ghost? What was prophesied over your life? What was spoken over your life? Oh, but when two chosen folk get together, the devil has to launch demonic activity because he wants to make sure that he disturbs the fabric of the miracle. Verse 3, is not this the carpenter's son, the son of Mary, the brother of James, uh, Joseph, uh, Judah, Simon, and not, not these his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him. Jesus said unto them, a prophet is without honor, y'all not with me, in his, sounds the same, in what? In his own country. Then he said, amongst his own kin and in his own house. Verse 5, y'all not pushing on this side again. And because of that, he could, and he could there do no mighty work, saved, see this ain't in there, lay hands upon a few sick folk and heal them. He couldn't go past that. Let me talk to Shabbat, those who love me and been with me long enough to talk. We should be experiencing way more power than what we're experiencing. Because if the God that uses me on the road is a different God that uses me at home, is it that he can't do it here or you won't let him do it here? Tis no secret what God can do. I'm going to preach in a minute. What he's done for others. He'll do the same for you. Look at what it says. He laid hands upon a few 
sick folk. And they were healed. And he marveled, Jesus marveled at how far he could not go. And he now determines what's not releasing him to go into the miraculous is their unbelief. So instead of doing miracles and doing mighty works, the Bible said he went round about villages teaching. We get a lot of teaching here. We just ain't getting enough proof that the teaching works. That means we got a lot of unbelievers in here whose company contaminates what God has put in you. Look at your neighbor and tell them you are company. I said, tell them your company contaminated. Yeah. Most of my real friends don't go to church. How are they real? That's a problem. As a matter of fact, that's almost dishonor. I trust street folk more than church folk, but church folk came from the street. Like, you really sound retarded. That everybody in the church came from the street. You sound retarded. When did they change? Because they joined the church? You know how many professional tongue speaking liars are in this building this morning. And some of them smile at their own demons. This ain't funny. See, I'm from old school. I'm a pastor that you start doing it, I'm a soon call your name. I ain't got no problem. None. You've been company contaminated. They don't like the King James because it's too brutal. Let's go to the message Bible and read this over. Because the King James is just too brutal. He left there and returned to his hometown. His disciples came along on the Sabbath. He gave a lecture in the meeting place. He stole the show, impressing everyone. He had no idea that he was that good. They had no idea that he was that good. How did he do these great things? Where's his wisdom from? Where, he, where does he get the ability? Verse 3, but in the next breath, they started cutting him down. He's just a competitor. Where we hear this is where we get this from two people out of hundreds who will scream. When people start getting familiar and start calling you by your lowest degree of a person, they're trying to make you common. I know he or she is anointed, but you don't know what I know. When Negroes talk like that, they are displeased with themselves. Because people who know who they are, I need better screamers. You can look at somebody doing bad and say, I see something good in you. But people that are doing bad, that don't plan on doing good, they never see good in anybody. So the way they can hang around you for the little bit of time they have with you is to talk to your common side. What do we both have in common? So two hurt women talk about abuse. I've been abused. Me too. High five. Why y'all high fiving on that? The Yaya sisters. Where, where y'all get all these clubs? Yaya, yaya. I, 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 I love Lisa. I love it. Yaya, 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 yaya. Out of one voice, they're praising you, and then out of nowhere, they're cutting you down. It says, who does he think he is? Here's the difference in the last message reading in this, and give me three folk who still push me. They tripped over what little they knew about him and fell sprawling. People are talking about a little portion of you. 
because they're intimidated by the whole picture. Yep, bless everyone that just clapped again. Hold on. They tripped over what, they, what little they knew about them and fell sprawling, and they never got any further. Jesus told them, see, you can't let your enemies have the last word. Jesus told them for three folk, a prophet has little honor in his hometown among his relatives, on the streets where he played in as a child. So Jesus wasn't able to do much of anything there. He just laid hands on a few people that were sick and healed them. That's all. He couldn't get over their stubbornness. I know he said we ought to jump and run, but I'm just not like that. I know God hears me. I'm not going to scream. Why? Why? The 90% 90, 90 of us do it. Who are you? Some of you are like people who go to gym every day and put on gym clothes but never work out, right? Yeah, yeah, just, just go to church. That's why you sit near somebody you're familiar with. Because if you sit near power, them spirits in you ain't going to feel comfortable. That's why in the old church they told you get up, stop talking, and moved you. He left and made a circuit of the other villages teaching. I'm about to go to my notes and then preach. I'm sorry. The hindrance of miracles. Look at someone and ask them, what's hindering your miracle from getting to you? Now I'm going to dance again before I get out of here. Because I already see the miracle. Sometimes having to teach over and over again the same people the same thing and seeing no results means that those that are hearing it don't believe it. Let me quote a scripture for my seasoned saints who won't talk. If you believe on me as the scripture says, out of your bellies, I can get, shall flow ripples of living water springing up into everlasting life. The song says, spring up, oh well. All right, let me. They don't know that, so let me leave it. And because of people's unbelief, they basically don't know. They dismiss the presence of the miracle. Let me read and keep reading until I get some activity on the front row. We must believe that what is being preached has to be expected. Until what is said from the spirit materializes in the natural. Look at your neighbor and tell him, I'm going to pull it from up there, right down here. But there is another important aspect, Shabbat, that must be considered and understood before we ever ask God for a miracle ever again. Here's where I need to preach and here's where I'm going to need you not to get mad and give me eight minutes to get on your nerve. What we don't understand is, where there's no honor, there's no miracles. Let me say it again. I don't even expect half of you to scream that loud because most of you don't honor nobody. He or she is a human just like me. Shut your demonic mouth. All women are alike. All men are dogs. Shut 
your demonic mouth. I don't trust nobody but one person. You must be kidding. Let me talk to people who will talk. Most folk who don't trust can't be trusted. You're pulling out all of my flaws because you know what you're doing if it ever gets out. It's going to supersede anything you told folk about me. See, mine is messy, but you're a mess. I don't mind being in the mess. I don't want to be the mess. Will you tell someone what I just told you? Go and see if you remember. I bet those who are messy don't even remember what I said. When God sends people into your life, if they're sent by God, they're there to look at you in something that they've been sent to help you get out of. Two messy people. All right, I'm going to leave it alone. Somebody scream the word honor. honor. Now I want you to scream it with power and authority. Honor. honor. Exodus chapter 20, verse 12. One of the most rewarding, miraculous commandments is the one I'm about to read. Because the commandment is not just an order. It's an order, y'all not hear me, followed by a reward. It is God's word followed by a miracle. Let me read it and the first 10 to jump, scream and holler, you will get it. The Bible says these words in Exodus 20 verse 12. Honor! Thy father! And thy mother. That's what it said. If you honor colon your days. If cancer say three months, God says three years. Your days. If diabetes say you're going to die, God heals your kidney and give you a piece of sweet potato pie. Your days. I can't get nobody believing me. Your days are long, not because of prayer, not because of fasting, but because you utilize the tool called honor. I give God glory. No, real scripture says the glory and the honor. Y'all... The whole world deep on glory. What is glory? Everybody talking about glory. Nick Rose, talk about honor. I feel the glory of God. We don't want to hear all that. Once again, this is a commandment. Honor. I'm almost done, man. Thy father and thy mother, that your days... Be long upon the land which the Lord God wears, giveth thee. What it means in the original text for 18 folk who will jump is if you honor them, I'll let you enjoy life for a long time. It's terrible to live long in a mess. This, that God's way of making you miserable is to leave you in the mess for all your life. He said, what's missing is you're too messy. You don't know how to utilize honor. I told my church this on Wednesday for the two who will jump. I don't care if your mama was a prostitute and your daddy was a crackhead. Honor finds something good to say. And if you don't say nothing, at least say if, if it wasn't for these two. 
I don't care what they did. You the reason why they're here. And you are hating where you're from. That's dishonor. I think I'm boring, y'all. Forget that one. 1 Timothy 5, 17 and 18. Then I'm going to read two paragraphs and fly my kite. Let's see if 30 of you scream on this. Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy, especially those who labor. Oh, you're in the word and doctrine. Tell my assistant pastor to hurry up and get back in this church. Let the elders that rule well. Be counted worthy. While you y'all better keep your mouth off of preachers. All the way off. Your parents ain't raised you right. They say, I'll slap in your mouth. Keep your mouth off the men and women. What's wrong with y'all? Once you do that, because somebody's company contaminated your belief, the miracle steps away. Oh, y'all, it's not a demon. It's you. The miracle say, oh, no, no, uh-uh. No. And you keep talking about them. The miracle be like, I'm gone. Now, y'all going to miss this because you ain't screaming. God will still be with you. But the miracle won't. God is not a miracle. He's a miracle worker. I'll give an example. If someone prophesied to you, and said, thus saith the Lord thy God, thou shalt be a millionaire by 2025. I might really be saying it, but don't. Right? As soon as you receive a jump and shout, be like my bishop said, right? And all hell breaks loose within the year. Because the word is the finale is not the process, right? Uh-oh. Uh I think I'm leaving people. I think I'm losing people. I think I'm losing people. Because you received it, mess is now attracted to you. The more you pay attention to the mess versus the message, the miracle backs off. Now, here goes the bigger plot, and maybe three of you will scream loud because you want a miracle today, is if company come to you and start contaminating you against the one that spoke it to you, your dishonor cancels it. So now the way you try to still look right is you try to bring out the mess of the voice instead of your dishonor. I get it. Now this ain't on my notes and I'm sticking to my notes so God is doing this part. So I might as well say to five of you who will scream in the back, you that literally defend your ministry and your leader against what you heard, your miracle right around the corner, baby. See, some of you that are screaming, that's real. The others that pity patting, because you the one that did it. Why would you say anything against anyone to break who they are in the sight of other people? Why would you do that? I'm going to get out. Let them be worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in word and doctrine. Verse 18, give me my teachers back. For the scripture saith. Y'all don't, hey, hey, Raheem, y'all got to talk to me. The scripture saith, muzzle thou shalt not muzzle the ox that treadeth out the corn and he and the laborer 
I don't know why God blessing them. No, why he ain't blessing you. And if God can bless them like that, I know he gonna bless me. Your miracle's like, nah. Nah. Mm -mm. This looks like a competition. This is, this person is dishonorable. I'm going to preach now. If y'all get up off me. What does this honor look like? Then I'm going to my hoop. This is for eight people who will talk. Dishonor is when a person refuses to accept what the vessel has to offer. I ain't got to receive everything. Timothy just told you, if it is sound doctrine. Oh, y'all, if it is the word of God, whether you like it or not. Thank you, Dr. Tracy, because some of y'all acting crazy now. I got to go study that for myself. You don't even own the Bible. You don't write. You don't do no. What you mean you got to study it? When you even start knowing enough Bible to critique a sermon. Your faith cometh by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. But how can you hear? How do you attack what's building your spiritual resilience? How do you attack the vessel that's making your soul fat? The second way you dishonor, then let's go to church. Fifth, if you catch this, is when you make the mission of the vessel difficult. See, all of this is what I want on reels. Forget all that shouting, he the prophet and he could hoop. I know that. Put this teaching on these reels. Y'all hear that? Do that right now. Forget all that action. I'm not a popular active preacher. Put something that makes sense. That might not get a million views. It might only get two. But at least you know the two people watching that. They want their souls to be fed. This is not entertainment. This is evangelism. You draw what you advertise. Good to see you back, sir. Walk us safely. Listen, dishonor is when you don't accept what the vessel has to say that God has put in he or she. And two is when you make the assignment of that vessel difficult. When you need a miracle, I said this Wednesday, then let's fly the kite. You must be careful speaking with people who make the voice that God put over your life common. You never call your pastor by their first name. I heard somebody did that in here. You know him as pastor. I know him as Todd. You don't know me. Because Todd would have slapped you in your mouth. You did that to make yourself look bigger than what you were. Respect loves respect. Respect is allergic to disrespect. Can't you speak well of people and still be well received? If the girl's prettier than you, then just say she's beautiful. What's wrong with a compliment? Ain't none of us the finest mojo this tired of time. Nobody. Nobody. Who can? Nobody. It bothers me when overweight people call other overweight people big. Right? I hate to hear people who was big brag, I lost 90 pounds because you're a diabetic, because you're on pills, because you had that cosmetic surgery. You ain't lost nothing. Then you use it to your own glory. By dishonoring the process.
Now I know I'm preaching because my, because my Lev Levites are saying preach. That's sad, Bishop. When you need a miracle, you must be careful allowing certain company to contaminate the respect you have for your voice. My bishop is dead. My former bishop, 26 years straight, never served anyone else. When he died, he's gone. But I promise you that if any of you talk negatively about my dead bishop, you're going to join him. See, some of you won't say amen because you don't love nobody to that level. When they tried to take Jesus, Peter pulled out a sword. And he honored him. Oh, y'all. Oh, y'all. Oh, you don't want me to get you. He honored. I see some of you. He honored Jesus. Jesus didn't say, come out of him, Satan. Peter, you are violent. He said, put it up. He didn't say throw it away. He said the time has not come. Then he made it known that there are angels that are thuggish. For I could call angels from heaven. Uh, heaven ain't all sweet. And before I let you dishonor me, I'm going to have to cut you. We're almost ready to preach now. I see some, some visitors. He's real violent. Something must have happened to him when he was a little child. Did he serve in the military or something? No. The exact opposite, blood or crip. The exact opposite now. The reason why Jesus... Put Malchus ear back on. Maybe you didn't read the story. He then told Peter, put it up, picked up the ear, reattached it. All of the sinew and flesh that made him hear came back. Jesus did that for one reason. Unless he, um, listen, he could have cut off his hand. He'd have been a man with one hand. He could have cut off his leg. He'd have been a man with one leg, right? But he cut off the area where faith. See, a person can change when they start listening. And if I cut off your ability, I gotta get out. Some of you are not gonna make it because your ability to listen. You let someone cut it off. I said all that to get to my preacher. And that was a lot of teaching. I said all of that for this, and I need 20 of you to push me. Once you get familiar with the voice, the miracle because familiarity births contempt is told to pause. Because you make what that voice is building difficult. I'm about to preach. The miracle that you would have received is delayed and sometimes denied. Shake somebody like that's your friend until they feel something now. Let me give you my closing example. You don't have to stand. Sit on down till it gets good to you. Sit him down till it gets good to you. I now know what Noah felt when he has to preach the same sermon for 120 years. His ministry grew the first year, but by year 20, you need to stop going there. They preach the same thing every darn time. Noah can't preach. I can tell you what he's going to preach straight off the top. It's raining. And the reason why they couldn't get with his ministry is his ministry is somewhat prophetic. 
the way his ministry is somewhat prophetic for 10 millionaires is this. He's preaching what has never come. Uh-oh, I'm almost there. People believed it was coming like you do in the beginning of September. But as things get horrific and tedious and arduous, second and third week, you start backing off that word. You get a prophecy hand laid on you, now all hell breaks loose. I don't want another prophecy in my life. Because you don't see the outcome because you're paying too much attention to the process. Y'all help me. Thank you. Look at somebody and tell them, God is not a man that he should lie. Nor is he the son of a man that he should repent. If he said it. If God said it. God will do what he said he would do. He's not a man that he should lie. He he. He, what it will come true because no weapon formed against me shall prosper, right? God can't lie. If God said right now it is night, the sun would stop shining right now. Because to prove he is God, everything submits to his voice. It's raining. Year 50, church, it's going to rain. Lord, gee, it passed. Year 65. Passed. Now you start inviting people, telling them what my pastor going to preach on. See, you that are talking, you're about to get it. But catch this. If people were smart and believed what he was preaching, I'm going to see if one person run now. Somebody would have created an umbrella and got rich see he speaks it to make somebody step out on it so that they can start creating something for what's about to come somebody would have been like it's coming from up top yeah all right well then let me start creating something let me make some good old goulashes so they don't mess up my louis batons Let me make a rain cap so it don't mess up my hair. You can tell they never believed what he was preaching because they never did anything. They did nothing but hear a group of people contaminate them by saying, you believe it's going to rain. Now, I'm going to ask a question for 30 folk who will jump with y'all, especially the fly girls that I see finally standing, pushing me. God bless all you with wonderful husbands or great businesses, whatever you want first. But catch this. Do you believe that it's going to happen this month? See, that's a question. Now, I hear your scream today. What will it be next Sunday? A flat, let me hear it. He says it's raining, it's raining, it's raining. He can't get the followers to get in on what he's preaching. Only people that bought into what he was preaching because they were ordered to was his family. Hear me, I need screamers who want to be wealthy. When something is being preached, something has to be built. Now, I'm almost there. I'm almost there. I'm almost there. Why did it take 120 years? Once, uh, well, we got several reasons, but I'm going to give the easiest one. I believe it took that long, not just for the rain. This is for 30 people. It took that long because his family moved that slow, right? Because he's without honor. What are we building? For what? Uh-oh, it just got quiet. Now it just got quiet. 
dad. Come on, man. Noah probably didn't believe what he was building. But he honored God by continuing to build. You do it when you don't want to do it. Y'all give me three minutes and make me preach so I can go home. They're building it and what they built looked like a perfect box. I saw people make it look like a real ship. You did not read the cubic inches and the height. It is a perfect device that should have never floated. Oh, see, it should have never been able to get off the ground. It was not created like the ships today. It was created to stay where you built it. But when you build it on the word of God, oh, y'all look quiet. God will undergird it. I almost want to preach. Uh-oh, uh-oh. In order for what the ministry is building to float, God must bring this past what he spoke. Now, Lord, I done built it. Where's the rain? Why let it rain when ain't nothing built? Why give you money and you ain't got no vision? Why give you a husband and you can't cook clean or want to? Why give you a wife and you ain't going to never be home? What are you building for what he's speaking? It starts raining. It begins, y'all not there, to do something that they never saw. It started off as trickles. Thing that make you. What came from heaven made them look up. Look at your neighbor. Tell them, look up now. It's time to look up. Tell them, stop bowing that head. Time to look up now. I will lift up my eyes. Y'all make me preach and I will. To the hills from which cometh my help. <laughs> cometh from the Lord. A flat again. I'll be there. My help cometh. From the Lord who hath made both the heavens and the earth. What happens is they are now experiencing what they didn't believe was being preached. And the first thing it did was change the unbelievers' thoughts. They start saying, ah, well, maybe he did hear from God. See, they won't say he did, even though it's coming to pass. Because they were always vessels of dishonor. But once, I'm almost there, you are a vessel of honor. You start tagging people and be like, what you got to say now? It's raining. It went from trickles to drip drops. It went from drip drops to pouring pretty hard. Please don't lose what I'm preaching. It goes from that to what we call a deluge. Let me prophesy what I'm saying and ten of you start jumping. Something started happening that we didn't think would ever stop. And God says, tell you when I bless you, when it rains, it pours. 
And I want the Lord to hear me. Anyway, you bless me, Lord. I'll be satisfied. Look at somebody and help me preach that and tell them, let me hear that A flat and say, neighbor. neighbor. Oh, that sounds good. Uh, neighbor. Anyway, he blesses me. I'll be satisfied. Tell him for the past few years, I've been getting sprinkles, drip drops, but God's about to saturate me from the crown of my head to the very sole of my feet. Look at somebody and tell them you're about to rise from the bottom to the top. And when people ask you, how did you get off the floor? Tell them, I believe in the word of God. In the word of God. I've got to, y'all better stop acting like y'all can preach. I've got to hide in place. Grab a neighbor by the hand. If they're not contaminated. And say, neighbor. Did you hear what the voice said? This will be a September to remember because God is about to open the windows of heaven, pour us out a blessing. There won't be room enough to receive. Just tell your neighbor like you feel like preaching. Hang on in there. Don't say it like you're passing. Say it like you're ready to be blessed. And tell your neighbor, I don't know you as much as anybody else. But if you're chosen and been waiting on God, there have been days, weeks, months, and years that you felt like giving up but what's gonna bless your heart are these two words or should i say three words hang on in there because by september the 30th september the 30th god's gonna saturate you bless you from the crown of your head Grab another neighbor and help me preach a little while longer and say, neighbor, do you read the Bible? Do you believe the scripture? Do you have any sound doctrine? You may not know homiletics. You may not understand hermeneutics. You may not understand exegesis. But one thing you do know is the Lord is my shepherd. I shall, I shall not want, he maketh me to lie down in green passion. He leadeth me beside the still water, he anointed, y'all better get up out of here, he leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake yay ah, yay ah, yay yay though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I fear no evil I fear no evil for thou art with me your rod your staff they comfort me that preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointed my head with oil, my cap runneth over. Surely, surely, not surely, surely. 
goodness and mercy shall follow me some days, most of the days, on holidays, all the days of my life. And I'll dwell, and I'll dwell, and I'll dwell in the house of the Lord. How long? How long? How long? Grab another neighbor. We're about to go and say neighbor. Come on, find a good communicator and say neighbor. The miracle is you're about to get what heaven's been holding back because you changed your mind and went back to believing. If God can raise the dead, he can heal your children. If God can heal the sick and open blind eyes, he can pay all your bills. But if I were you, I would not wait until the battle's over. I would not wait until the bills are paid. I would not wait till my tears dry up. I would not wait until he proposes to me. But I shout now because when life trouble come my way, I'll hold my head up. y'all jealous now just pray oh, neighbor. God said the whole month is a month to remember he may not hold yours until the end of the month if you start believing like you used to he might do it before you get home I need a miracle right now and if anybody ask you What's the matter with me? Tell him I'm saved. Ah, sanctified. Holy Ghost feel fire. Because I know I'm getting on your last nerve. But I gotta testify. Since the pastor been preaching, male or female, I think I got pregnant. And before I leave out of here, I'm about to give birth to a miracle. See how they act and say miracle, 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 miracle. And if they believe it, you're about to get it. Open the floodgate. Open the floodgate. Open the floodgate of heaven. Let it rain.
favor saying. So be careful who you touch on your last time around. Find somebody, grab them by the hand. Look them in the face and act like you trust God. And say, neighbor, I've got a feeling. Y'all didn't say that right. Come on now. Put some sauce on there. Put some spice on that problem. And say, I've got a feeling that everything, everything, everything is going to be all right. It's all right now. It's all right now. It's all right now. It's all right now. I want you to speak not over your neighbor but to your neighbor something good I don't care what comes to your spirit don't get personal don't try to be prophetic just find something good to say to your neighbor like debt free or new keys and speak over your neighbor all over the church healing restoration revival I said revival Did they say something nice to you? Well, be courteous. Say something nice back. And tell them double for your trouble. Double honor. Two houses. Two bank accounts. Three, four, five. Exceeding abundantly. to close Lord. this is not to play a machando this is not to play around I'm only going to let the music play literally for two minutes max for those who know the devil was trying to unbraid my belief. But I got to lock it back in. God says when you're praising him, the miracle is going to come back that walked away. When you feel it getting close to you, turn your praise up a notch higher. We do this by faith. And what was promised is about to fall on you. You've got right now 120 seconds to praise them right where you are. One, two, two.
Watch out. Watch it, Chef Kevin. Praise him to one of that's waited over three, four years for certain things to happen, I'm not asking you, I'm commanding you to get this carpet and sign your name with your feet and let the devil know God's about to rain on me. You've got 30 seconds. Play that carpet.
Watch it, Minister Ferguson. Watch it.
If it's real, I can hear your voice. I want to say two things. One of them might make you very happy. You that are young enough and vibrant enough to stand, stand, we're closing. You that are seasoned and paid the price or experiencing temporary illness or pain, you may be seated. But look at me on the screen or look at me face to face. Remember this, Bishop, you and I, my son Howie, our crew, Don, one day we'll talk about this. The miracle, look at me, I'm closing, was the rain, shh, for those who believed it was coming, the miracle, I'm going to see who catch it, was later on, the ship, for those who needed to come out of the rain. I'm going to say it one more time. God will give you a miracle until you finish building what he showed you. Prophet Dr. Brown said he caught it already. It's this simple. Everybody was excited about the rain when they found out they couldn't get in the ark. You must support what you're building. Because at the end of the day, the miracle is in the completion of what you're building. Look at your neighbor with clothes and tell them, complete the task. Second thing I want to close with, look at me and look happy. You that didn't praise all service, you don't have a demon. You just don't have a reason. I ain't going to speak demonic on nobody. But catch this, especially for my members. Wednesday, I need everyone here that's a member because that's when we're going to have a unique teaching of no church, just me telling you my story. We're going to meet the pastor on Wednesday. Did y'all catch what I said? That's, that is not going to be streamed. There will be no streaming, so you won't be able to see it staying home. I want to introduce you to myself so that you can better defend your voice. If you hear it from the horse's mouth, you don't have to see a pony speak. Can y'all hear me? I want to do what I've seen no pastor do yet, and that is sit and be transparent with you so that you can stop hearing the voices that want to cut off your ears. We're going to have that discussion on Wednesday, I'm going to utilize the whole service, praise and worship straight to me, no dancing, and we're going to show you clips of me from back in the 80s all the way till today. So you can understand who it is you're following. Because I'm sure some of you never heard of me till recent, and I'm sure I've never heard of some of you until today. But we've got to get to know each other better. You can't defend what you don't know. Look at somebody and tell them, I'm so glad this ministry is building something stable. Play softly. I don't do this often, but this is my third week. In case you do not have a church home. And you need a solid place where sound doctrine is being taught. I'm going to open up the ark so you can come out the rain. I need you to stop playing in the rain. You're going to drown out there by yourself. I need a church, Dr. Hall, where I can be properly covered and taught the word of God without compromise. The way you join the church is you get out of your seat and you meet us up front. You have 30 seconds to make the best decision of your soul's life. Oh, Lord, my God. Oh, I don't hear y'all clapping up in here. I got another one coming. Hello. 
Hello. Are there any more who say, I want to be covered? I don't care what church you were raised in. Well, I'm Baptist, I'm Catholic. No, you need to be covered in a ministry that builds what it believes off of the scripture. You may not like, uh oh, I see a couple coming down here. I don't hear nobody screaming. Shabbat, this is three weeks back to back. I know I'm going to have to work with you because you have a ministry. I see who you are already. I don't know you, but I know God's hand is richly on your life. And through all of discouragement in 15 years or more, whatever you've been through, God's going to reverse it. I don't hear nobody in my church. I'm going to introduce you one day to some of the mothers, maybe only one or two, because you have a prayer life that's unusual. And we need to ask God to teach that gift how to be used. So just know, in the future, you will be the one that we'll be calling for. You, I've been waiting on you for over a year. You will have a few enemies in this church because the women in this church are jealous of one another. Especially when a woman has a prophetic odor or aroma. We're going to pray for you. We're gonna, I'm going to pray that Pastor Mixon shows you a lot of things so you can bypass mingling with the wrong task force. You, we already know. I ain't got nothing to say. Hello, what's your name? Where are you from? Delaware, and you're living here now? How long you been here? I'm gonna ask God to do a few things for you, because number one, I see business dreams. I see dreams. I see a lot of, you have so much gifts, but them gifts have to now come where you can start making some real money. I'm gonna ask God to find you a new place to live too, because I know what God wants to do for you. Y'all clapping for her? Woman of God. You are here. I can't say everything, but one reason is to be healed from those who didn't believe in you. Sometimes people are not ready for what is too powerful. I believe you're here because God one day, you may not believe me if he delays his coming, will be helping us help you launch. You have an unusual anointing on you that's apostolic, and we want to see that ministry go to work. And somebody you need to clap your hands and tell God thank you. Y'all hold hands with each other. We're going to do the short version. Then I look to see y'all either Wednesday or the following Sunday. And I'm going to introduce you to me. The new members class is fine, but I'm going to start doing the class by introducing you to your pastor. I think if people give you how, what, what our church is, but you don't know what your leader believes, it can put the cart before the horse. I want you to know me. So if you're out eating and say, I joined that church and they start dogging me, you can say powerful words like, I already know, now watch your mouth. This is the way, this is the way this Pentecostal apostolic thugged out church operates is, is you can't talk about my members, you can't talk about my musicians, you can't talk about my leaders, you can't talk about my brothers, I don't hear anybody, you can't talk about my sisters, you can't talk about my young adults, you can't talk about my teenagers, nor my children. We are our brother's keeper. Bow your heads, close your eyes. Now, Father, I thank you for all six of these. Lord, you have proven, seven, you have proven that you are ready for us to grow. Thank you for three works, three weeks of multiplication. Lord, take us past the addition process. We've survived the subtraction process. Thrust us into the multiplication process and never let us see the division. Now, Lord, bless them from the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet. I do not have to pray a prayer of salvation for they are saved. 
but they're anointed and now they need to be encouraged. So now let the words of my mouth as they pass the meditation of their hearts as their voice be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Will all seven of you please turn to your new brothers and sisters and you that know how to love them quickly. Come on out of there. Please, deacons, elders, do your jobs. Have them stand there. Where, where are my elders and deacons? Please obey my deacons and elders. Please obey Elder Kevin Jackson. Quickly, 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 quickly. We've got a lifetime to get to talk to him. Give them genuine love. Jehovah, we pray. We pray. We pray. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. I love these members. We're growing. We're growing by the power of the Holy Ghost. We're growing. Now we need to see what we grow into. What we grow to become. Can y'all clap for our addition family, the addition to our family? You that are watching by social media, if you want to be covered by Watch Care, you want to be a part of a prophetic ministry that still believes the word of God, there are ways on the screen for you to join and become a part of our virtual sanctuary and to become an e-member. And I welcome you as your pastor in Jesus' name. Softly, everyone standing. Let me make the announcement plain because I think someone still didn't get it because other people just came and asked me again of something that I made very clear. After church this morning, you are going home. There will be no meet the pastor today. You're going home. Now, hold the music. On Wednesday, I'm asking all of the members for the first time to show up together. And I want to utilize this Wednesday with no streaming to introduce myself to you from a ministerial standpoint. 
so that you can see with your eyes what some of you never seen because you weren't born. I've been preaching more than some of you are old. So when you're talking about something, you got to be careful what you say before the bears come out and eat you. I want to put enough visibility in talking you that you begin to feel honored to be a part of what we're doing. I do know prophetically that we've got two members in our church that are still members that smile and act like they love me who's destroying my name. One of them are going to get critically sick. Critically. You just spoke about me in a negative way this week to a member that left. You are going to get critically sick. And because you just poked out your lips, it will start tonight. That's the way the Bible used to do it. We cannot have you close to us knowing that you're the one trying to kill us. It is best that you move on. Can I get a witness up in here? It is best. Don't write no letter, just don't show up. You're not even important enough to leave us with a letter, just go. I don't want Minister Katrina getting no more letters from folks saying, love you, my time is up here, just time up. All right, because it hurts when I see folk come, we open our hearts, trust them, entreat them, love on them, and find out they were the ones doing it. That is a high level of dishonor, and I want you to live. So go where you can live, amen? Go where you can eat, go where you can submit and serve. Wherever you go, don't kill no more leaders. Respect your elders. Honor thy mother and thy father. I want you all to follow Minister K Katrina. She will take y'all and take your names and go through the process. Great, can we clap for our family? Everyone standing this way. She has to get her purse, y'all, but this way. Uh, everyone that's about to give. Oh, y'all thought y'all were going to get out of giving? Y'all didn't see Elder Jackson come bring. What you, what you stole, stole her offering? Oh, yeah, all right. You just picked it up. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask everybody to give something good, whatever good is, even our new members, something good, whatever good is to you. I'm not going to put an amount on it, but if I was some of you, because this is a September to receive more than you want. If that man could give what he gave and get a kidney, you better hurt yourself a little bit. 